Okay, so let's get started on the webinar. Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, I think this is going to be a very interesting conversation today. Um, I'm just going to give you a kind of a little bit of a, set the stage, if you will, um, to what we're talking about today. Uh, obviously, the title is how to use the integration hub to instantly generate new revenue. What we really are talking about here is is the power of extensibility in um, uh, stay in touches uh, cloud PMS and uh, and then how basically it's really easy to essentially move the revenue needle um, by uh, taking advantage of the huge array of, of integrations that stay in touch already has set up. Um, I think that uh, you know many of us have talked about the benefits of the PMS. Uh, the SaaS pricing, uh, the ease of use, um, uh, low maintenance, things of that nature. But I think extensibility is probably the most powerful part of the Stay in Touch PMS. Um, it's it's the it's the ability to basically configure the PMS so that it is appropriate for your hotel. Um, that maybe finding that extra feature set that's going to give you a competitive advantage, uh, or more importantly, uh, generate revenue. Um, we're also going to be speaking to Modus Hotels today, and um, and I think that they're going to talk about how important having a a uh, kind of a bespoke tech stack is for management companies who are trying to differentiate themselves as well. Um, the way if you celebrate Christmas, I think the the way to think about uh, um, the PMS and apps is the apps are your ornaments on your tree except these apps actually kind of print out dollar bills for you. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's really that easy. And, um, and, and it really, it really is not too much work. Um, one of the things I think that we're going to go over today is um, I think a, a lot of like a lot of folks in a hotel don't know, don't think that of their job as being very specifically I'm in charge of providing new apps for the PMS in order to improve the company. That that's not really in any hotelier's job description. However, it should be. Um, you know, new app features are no longer the purview of just the IT department anymore. Um, it's really driven by function, and functional teams, whether they be operations or revenue manager, need to be in the forefront of driving this. Um, the key thing about apps is adding new apps is not that that's going to add new responsibilities or tasks to your day, but in fact, it's going to remove tasks and responsibilities because most of the apps that you see in the app um, uh, that are available in the integration hub are really automation tools that are reducing the amount of effort that you have to expend. And then we'll talk about that specifically today with how that works with room decks and modus. But first, what I would like to do is just go around our, uh, the table and uh, ask my uh, panelists to all introduce themselves. And uh, Priya, let's, I'll start with you. Thank you, Paul. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Priya Rajamani. I'm the Vice President of Implementations and Support at Stay in Touch. And I know Paul's given me some time to go over what Stay in Touch is, and I'll cover that at, at that point. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Priya. Uh, Marco, um, quick introduction from you. Yes, good Good morning, um, everybody. My name is uh, Marco Berliman. I'm the Senior Vice President of Operations and um, Assets for Modus um, by PM uh, Hotel Group. Um, I'll talk a little later about our organizations and um, how Stay in Touch as well as Room Decks, um, you know, help bring that money that uh, Paul just spoke about um, into our organization. Thank you. Awesome. Um... Looking forward to it. And Yas, um, if you'd like a quick introduction of yourself, please. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Uh, my name is Josh Sharp. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Roomdex. Um, prior to Roomdex, I actually was CEO and co-founder of uh, Stay in Touch. And prior to that, I worked for 18 years at Micros on the Opera PMS product. So gone through a lot of integration efforts, experiences over the last 20, 25 years. And I, and I think uh, everybody will see uh, some very interesting opportunities with the today's integration around cloud PMS so specifically to stay in touch and room next. Looking forward to the conversation. Great, thank you very much. Um, uh, today's format is going to be as follows. We're going to just do a quick review of our product set. And in this particular case, it's going to be stay in touch and room decks. And then we're going to start to get into the nitty gritty of integrations and uh, performance. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Priya for what she was saying previously um, and let her do a quick introduction of Stay in Touch. Thank you so much, Paul. 
Um, so yes, so stay in touch is um, a cloud native PMS uh, with inherent mobility and ease of use that's already factored in. But in addition to it being a simple and intuitive PMS, it is a full PMS with extensive and in-depth modules to support uh, all aspects of hoteliering. It has extended groups, AR commissions, automated end of day where you're not having to spend hours doing an end of day batch that you would you know, typically do in a legacy PMS. Financial journals, you know, all extended capabilities of a regular PMS. But also over the course of the current year, we've expanded and are continuing to grow our chain and multi-property capability. And so our users are now able to manage chains, uh, uh, users uh, for their chain, um, you know, across the multiple properties that they're hosting on our PMS, along with having a consolidated availability and dashboard. And we continue to grow that. And uh, over the course of 2023, our goal is to be able to give them, you know, automated templates so that they'll be able to copy over from one property to the other and basically reduce onboarding time and even make it faster than what it is today. Um, we are also, um, uh, if you could move to the next slide, please. Sure, sure. Uh, we are also continuing to grow some of our capabilities and have introduced a whole array of products to make us a single point of contact for our customers for, you know, listening to the customer, listening to their asks and what they are wanting from us. We now have um, the integrated uh, Stay in Touch Pay platform, um, as well as a Stay in Touch booking engine and uh, channel management capabilities that we are offering for our customers to avail of. And the kiosk and the mobility aspect have always been a part and parcel of what Stay in Touch does. Next slide, please. So yes, to, uh, I just wanted to briefly touch upon um, our you know, cloud native capability. Unlike other PMSs that are migrating to the cloud and there's this whole cost of migration and the effort that it entails, we are actually built on the cloud from day one. What this means for our customers is that it comes with all the inherent benefits of you know, AWS the security, the robustness, the ability to auto scale. So as volume of traffic goes up, we auto automatically scale to, work, to meet that traffic. So everything happens in the background with none of it, um, you know, impacting our customers negatively or them having to be involved with any effort at all. Next slide, please. And lastly, we wanted to talk about our capability to integrate, integrate with our vendors and what that is what we're delving into with Roomdex today. Uh, the ability for us to have an open API stack, which allows our vendors to connect to us seamlessly and uh, which, which basically opens up the whole world of integrations to our customers. We have 1100 integrations already and we are constantly growing. Just in the month of November, we've added 10 more interfaces and that is going to continue to uh, be available for our customers to add, as uh, Paul said, decorations to the tree. That's right. It's a, a lot of decorations. Yes. <laughs> Hi, uh, thanks, Priya. Uh, yes, uh, just a quick introduction from Roomdex, if you would, please. Yeah, <clears throat> so Roomdex is, uh, I guess, one of those ornaments that uh, Paul talked about. Uh, it does actually print money for the hotels. What does it do? Uh, mm -hmm. We are a very easy to install and very easy to integrate and set up solution that focuses on hotel upsell uh, automation. So that includes room upgrades, early arrival, late departures, and guest services principal process really is, is that we connect to the PMS and we'll talk about that a bit more in the following slides. Uh, pretty much seamlessly, we collect everything that we need to prepare for an upsell. So that means we correct, collect all configuration data around pricing, room categories, packages, uh, reservations, profile, everything we need to really prepare an offer, put it into our into Roomdex, configure the system virtually automatically. We then do a very quick onboarding call with the hotel we review the um, configuration that the system has set itself up in. We re review the pricing, which is derived of the hotel rate strategy. Um, we then uh, basically are ready to go at what point the system starts sending offers, usually two to five days prior to arrival to the guests. The guests can look at those offers in real time and purchase um, any room upgrade, early arrival, late departure, guest service in real time. I think big difference with uh, a lot of our competitors is that we do we do show only what's available at that point in time, so the guests can be comfortable and assured that they get what they purchase, and the hotel can be also very uh, assured of themselves that they can actually fulfill 
the, the purchased uh, room upgrade, early arrival, and late departure. So it's a very simple and easy process. Once live, there is little or no work left for the hotel to do other than every now and then check the reporting on uh, how much revenue was generated. Uh, next slide, please. So in a few screenshots, it really shows um, what you see here. It's a simple room upgrade screen where we divide the room upgrade. We make it clear, very clear already through attributes what the guest gets more if they pur purchase a better room. Um, and from there on, the guests can then select on the next slide, uh, Paul, the ability to buy an early arrival, uh, guest services, all these things are being presented to the guests to simply buy and purchase as they wish to, to receive those. Next slide. All right, so so Yas, um, so I know that uh, you, you spent many years at, um, Micros working in developing Opera, um, you know, and for for a long time that was the standard for PMSs. Um, but I know when it came to extensibility, um, it was and to a certain degree still is um, more challenging that you might see in a new age, uh, new generation PMS like Stay in Touch. Do you want to kind of go into that a little bit? Yeah, I think I think you know today and you know, the years to come really offers really a real opportunity for hotels that are on a cloud PMS. We're talking stay in touch today, which as Priya mentioned, has a very open API infrastructure. It's really easy for us third-party uh, you know applications to connect to that. An interesting part for both the vendor and the hotel is there is no cost to it either. Uh, that means that we as a vendor don't have to pay anything to connect, but the hotel also doesn't have to pay anything to connect. We, as part of Roomnex, offer a free trial. So with this type of infrastructure and this, this type of setup, we can actually truly offer a free trial and show to the hotel that if you install a solution like Roomnex, you actually generate money very quickly and you can try it at any given time. It's very easy to set up uh, compared to what it was, you know, let's say with, with the previous applications where there was a requirement to install an interface and coming at high cost it says here five thousand dollars sometimes even more months of waiting time uh, so basically making it very hard for for hotels and hotel groups to innovate or to try out new things because it's you know at that cost you kind of can't really try anymore you have to be sure before you buy and i think big difference uh, that you'll see with you know with cloud integrations as they are today uh, it's basically you can try it at no cost and you can decide after X number of days to continue either on a monthly or on a yearly basis, just like you see in any other industry around software as a service. It should, it's really so much different now than it was years ago, which I think is, is, a, is a great benefit for hotels. And you know, hopefully in the years to come, hotels will really make the, the switch to cloud PMSs as, as fast as they can because it, it does really... Yeah, I mean, it just removes a huge hurdle if you don't have to purchase an interface, install it, and then wait for months to really, you know, take advantage of it. So, so Priya, let, let's dig in a little bit more granularly. Let's talk about um, your integration hub now, the, the, the specific fees, um, the specific process, the, the time it takes for a hotel. A hotel is, you know, watches something like this and says, oh, I want to do Roombox or, or some other app that I'm really interested in. Um, you know, what what do they have to look forward to? Um, yes, and I think it, it, keeping in line with what uh, Yoss just confirmed, it, it because of the kind of integration that it is, uh, we as Stay in Touch don't really charge anything for it. And because it's a direct API connection, the amount of time that it takes to set it up and activate is, you know, within 24 hours. So you can actually get up and running for an interface that you're wanting to use immediately. So um, what happens today is, you know, uh, if we move on to the next slide and uh, we look at what it was before and what it is today, as yours mentioned, you know, if you look at a legacy integration, it takes months. You need to schedule resources on both sides. You need to have the teams lined up. You need to then, you know, transfer messages, check, test, et cetera, et cetera. And which could be between the time that you sign up with the vendor and by the time that you get activated on the integration and actually use it could be anywhere ranging from two to six months. Uh, with an API integration like we do have with Roomdex, it's immediate. What happens today is the hotel signed up with Roomdex, they would approach us um, and they would let us know that we have an integration with Roomdex, can you please activate it for us? 
the day they make that request, um, we ask the hotel to send an authorization, which is somebody from the hotel tells us, yes, please issue keys, which is, uh, you know, it's the API keys um, and the access to the database to be able to retrieve information. And we, they send it to us via email. We go ahead and make that available to Roomdex immediately. Um, and from there on, at Stay in Touch, we would have a connector information that Roomdex has already provided to us. And that is like an endpoint that is standard uh, for all our hotels. We go ahead and apply that connector and set up something called webhooks. And so what that means is once the keys are issued to Roomdex, Roomdex is able to connect to our database. And when we set up webhooks, every time there is a transaction, a new reservation, a check-in, a check-out, that triggers information consistently to Roomdex. So within a span of 24 hours, you're actually activated already. Your reservation information is already transferring to Roomdex. Roomdex is able to see the kind of reservation data that they need to use to then do the trend mapping and offer pricing. And immediately you can activate it to start sending pricing offers, add-on offers, upsell offers to your customers. So like I said, the, the difference is um, in terms of effort from Stay in Touch, there is no setup involved at all. There's just an issuance of keys and setting up, you know, a set of web hooks, which is, um, let's say, 20 minutes. Um, and it, it could be um, uh, issued the same day or within 24 hours to make this, um, you know, get activated and going. Which is, I mean, which is in, in incredible flexibility. Um, um, I mean, in, in re the reality is on Monday, um, if any of you all call Priya and say, I'm interested in moving forward with Runebex, um, that means like by Wednesday, you're you're upselling and, 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 and pulling in money. One thing, Yas, I, I wanted to talk about before we get into the configurations itself, I wanted to talk about the, the importance of and quality of the two-way integration with Stay in Touch because I know that that is also um, sort of a differentiator for Rundex. Yeah, so, I mean, I think to add to what both you and Priya said, it really is a 24 hour um, <clears throat> timeline to go live with, the, with this application or both applications in this case. Um, if the hotel wants to do this, the email goes out, we set it up. And at that point in time, once we are connected, we retrieve all data from the PMS that we need um, so that basically means, um, and this goes within a few minutes. Um, once that's done, the system sets itself up entirely. Uh, so there is not much else to do other than really doing a quick call with the revenue manager of the hotel or the operations manager of the hotel to make sure that whatever we configured mimics the PMS. There's an opportunity to quickly add a few pictures, maybe update a few descriptions if they're not necessarily really clean in the PMS that can be changed. And that's pretty much it. And they're off to go. And key difference, I think, with, uh, with us and a lot of competitors is that we have a truly full two-way. So we, we, we request all information we need to automate the entire process. So due to the APIs that Stay in Touch has available and the APIs that we have on our side, we can retrieve uh, pricing. We have availability of even attributes, uh, not just room types. Uh, and because we have all of that, there is no need for the hotel to get involved in approving, an, you know, a purchase request or setting up a different price for the day or, you know, adding a feature. All that kind of stuff happens automatically. So once the system is all configured and once the onboarding call is done and the hotel says, let's go, the hotel can sit back and relax and basically watch the, um, you know, watch the money come in. It's, it's really that simple. And that's largely in, in, you know, because of the, the two-way connectivity that we have with, uh, with Stay in Touch and also with other PMSs at one time. Key for us really is, is to, in addition to providing revenue and ROI to the hotels, we also wanted to make sure the automation would, would be seamless, especially in times like these where staff is not always around. It's key that we can offer um, that automation, you know, all, from pricing all the way down to fulfillment. And I think that's the point I was trying to make in the beginning. It's like a lot of times when you're thinking, oh, should I bother to um, add an app with new features onto my PMS? Um, you know, you shouldn't be necessarily concerned that you're adding tasks, you're adding labor. You are, in fact, actually finding ways to uh, reduce yeah. your labor load by creating, because, you know, these automation tools are all about um, taking care of the busy work in the back end so that you don't have to. Um, I think that's the, that's important. Yeah, so, I, so I think. 
Yeah, I think that's that's you know, and I think Marco uh, is going to talk a little bit about that um, as he's one of our you know one of our customers. Um, but yeah, the, the automation was key, and the, it's just a few hours of work. Let's say one or two hours of work of somebody in the hotel to get get it all going after the email has been sent to stay in touch, uh, and that's that's kind of it. Then it all goes automatically. So you know, and and you know, there's there's always some concerns about. Yeah, is the availability matching? Is there is is there enough early arrival rooms available or late departures? But we've got our automation algorithms in place to kind of automate all of that for the hotel. If there's no early arrivals available, we don't sell them. So the hotel can be really assured uh, with this two this with this true two way integration that what we sell they can fulfill. I think that's really a key component. Yes, yeah, so what are we looking at here on the screen? So what you're looking here is uh, is a is what we call our room manager. That's basically the main screen from where you go to verify the room offers uh, are, are set up correctly. So you, you know, we automatically copy across all the room categories, um, all the features that are attached to a room, attributes that are attached to a room. And you can basically go into here deeper to see and make sure that whatever we, we copied across is matching and is perfect. Or, you know, sometimes hotels finds that they have not defined the bed types in the PMS 100% because, you know, in the PMS, it's considered there's somebody at the front desk talking to the guests. So that person at the front desk usually knows what's going on, but a computer needs to know everything exactly. Otherwise, you can't act on it. So this that's really what you do here. You verify the configuration and optimize it further before you start selling it. And, and here we're looking at uh, you're adding pictures for merchandising. Yeah, and... here, here you're adding a picture for merchandising, which can go, goes across to the offer whenever it's needed. And you can do pictures currently by room category. We're working on able to do those also by features and attributes. Something we'll uh, we'll announce in the very near future as well. Um, what about the I think this this is this is a key component of our system. <laughs> we don't uh, hotels don't have to do our pricing, so we're kind of an extended yield management system, so to speak. Uh, we work off the rate strategy in the hotels. Uh, we get that across from the PMS, whatever rate has defined or whatever rate is updated by either the hotel revenue manager, the revenue management system that I have in place, we get that all across. We look at the rate differentials that you can see here, some samples of, and then the hotel can set what we call a yield range. And that yield range determines how much it allows allows us or Roomdex to update or optimize the price for upselling. So, well, basically what we're doing is we're kind of working within the rate strategy of the hotel, trying to maximize the differentials as much as we can. And, you know, therefore, in a way, the hotel has always full control of Roomdex pricing because it's interlinked to each other without actually having to go into Roomdex and, you know, check on pricing again there. So it's the dynamic demand-based pricing. Correct. Uh, yeah. Room Changes room. every second. You could look at an offer in the morning. It could be very different uh, upsell offer than it is in the afternoon. And then this is what you got. That's the result. You get some uh, beautiful uh, screens that show you the enticing uh, room upgrades, early arrival, late departures, and uh, guest services. And I think especially around early arrival and late departure, automation is key. Uh, because in addition to availability, we also look at room status, uh, status, house status. So we, we know when rooms are, if there are enough, if there will be enough clean rooms to offer early arrival and extend uh, late departures. So if I'm a hotel, you're looking at this, I'm, uh, or maybe I, I um, you know, maybe I already have stay in touch. Um, you know, all this stuff is happening in the background. I'm not getting pinged to, you know, approve any requests or something. Um, how do I, you know, where do I see this in the PMS? How do I know this has happened? Yeah, so you can, so it's multiple ways. So you can see everything you need to know you see in the PMS, but it's just as a, as, a, as informational. There's no action required. So what really happens is when a guest purchases a, uh, let's say a room upgrade, we add a note to the PMS, we update uh, the PM reservation with, uh, with the price that includes the new price for the room upgrade. Um, we ensure that it's set up to charts at check-in or check-out, depending on what's our setup for uh, paying the guest in the PMS. All of that happens automatically if the guest arrives early, which you'll see on the next slide, you'll, the, the, the arrival time is updated or the departure time is updated. And again, there's a note created that states this guest purchased an early arrival at 3.50 p.m. afternoon through room next, something like that. All the information is there in the PMS. That's also one of our goals. We didn't want hotels have to go to our system to check on things because now they have to worry. 
you know, work into two systems. They can do the entire upgrade process that we defined for them from within their PMS and don't really have to go to room next other than reporting uh, once they're live. And that, that, that points out the importance of the two-way interface and the room decks and is, is, is writing back to the PMS as well. So you'll have all this information automatically. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So now, so, so what I really like to do is I, I'd, I'd really like to hear about how the rubber really hits the road um, from, from Marco. Um, Marco, just, I know you gave us a little introductions. Can, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, Modus Hotels, what your collection looks like, um, and then we'll kind of go from there. Yes, well, um, thank you for that, Pauling. Good morning, everybody, again. So Modus Hotels is a third-party um, hotel management company that is focused on independent as well as branded lifestyle hotels. So the lifestyle niche is really our uh, bread and butter that can be branded soft brands um, as well as hard branded such as Moda by Hilton to name um, one of them. We merged as an organization with PM um, Hotel Group earlier this year and um, that really helped us to accelerate our growth in that niche of lifestyle hotels. We have carved out some of the existing um, lifestyle um, properties that PM held in their portfolio and integrated it um, into ours. We're actually um, you know, moving on, integrating an additional one in the first quarter of 2023. And right now we have seven properties under management. They're mixed, independent, as well as uh, branded, um, one to come in Q1. We have three properties under construction and a handful of um, properties that are currently in pre-development. Um, majority of those are in the Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, sort of uh, mid-Atlantic, I would say, uh, corridor. And those that are under construction and in development, um, they will show that we're branching out of that geographical um, region a little bit. Now, um, our properties, the independent ones, majority of them are using Stay in Touch um, as their uh, PMS. And we have been I, I would say, if not property one, I think there was a, a property in um, in Holland that was the first one to adapt um, Stay in Touch, but we've probably been, you know, certainly the first uh, brand um, or hotel management company to adapt um, Stay in Touch as a PMS. And over the years, we have, um, you know, been uh, not only gaining um, confidence, but also been uh, very impressed by how Stay in Touch has continued to develop. And um, specifically, compared to the legacy PMS that we left behind years ago, how easy it is to integrate um, auxiliary tools, so the, uh, the ornaments on the tree, so to speak, right? And that has truly helped us to build a very powerful tech stack that we are obviously you know, continuously reviewing, but um, you know, Stay in Touch um, enables us to use Duetto as a revenue management system. We use vertical booking as a CRS. We use Salto as our locking solution. We use Delphi on the sales and catering side. Um, we're using Roomdex, obviously, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And we've just integrated Single um, into um, most of our properties as a text messaging solution to stay in contact with our customers. And through all of these integrations, and I know Priya um, highlighted this before as well as um, Yahas, the simplicity of doing so has to really be uh, pointed out because in the past, that's always been a choke point. It's been expensive as well as a headache. And we feel like now, once we understand whether Stay in Touch integrates with a partner that we're looking at, um, and if they do, then that's obviously as simple as it gets um, through the integration hub. And if they don't, um, then we obviously have conversations about it. And there is, you know, a, a path potentially to say, well, okay, this is interesting. And there is a potential scalability also for stay in touch. And we have brought um, partners like that um, forward. I remember we were probably the first integration uh, back then with Duetto and, and, and vertical booking. And there is a very solid connection, no downtime. It, it, it works as, as advertised. So thank you for that, Priya and, and your organization. <laughs> we certainly don't want um, for our brain, as we call the PMS, to, um, to not be stable. Now, so, as it so, relates to, sorry, go ahead, Paul. Oh no, just my quick question for you is is that is that um, you talked about your tech stack. I mean, can you tell me tell talk to us about the importance of the tech stack 
um, for your type of business, for a management company business and the competitive advantages that, that you, you require. Yeah, so when when we talk about the tech stack and, and, and why it's important, it's obviously, our first thought is always ease of use for the customer. Like, does it enhance the customer experience? Does it help us provide um, elevated service um, to the customer? And is it intrusive or does it work in the background, right? Is it there to remove um, a, a challenge, an obstacle or a hurdle that we, we may be experiencing, or is it simply there to say such as Zingle, for instance, okay, customers, they like to text. Obviously the pandemic has sort of highlighted that even further. And um, you know, therefore we see what's available on the market, who's having a solution that solves that problem best. And we're, we're adding um, to it, but, but um, you know, when we look at how we're scaling as a third party management company, I think it's really important for a developer or an owner to understand that we are giving a lot of thought um, about this because at the end of the day, um, the developer owner will rely on us and our recommendation of what is best if they're um, planning an independent hotel. If you brand it, then it's obviously slightly different, but it's, it's a powerful thing to say, this is what we have. This is um, the proven record. Um, it's not set in stone, it's continuously evolving, but we're building upon it because everybody understands that these days technology um, is the foundation of what we do and is here to help um, elevate the customer experience as well as, you know, um, reduce operating uh, costs wherever possible. Um, so let's talk about a little bit about Rubex. Um... Uh, you know, you've been, I, I know, I think you've been using Stay in Touch for, gosh, seven, eight years, it seems like. Um, I feel like it's been that long. Um, Room Dex, you've also been using for a year or two. Um, how has it per been performing? Um, and, you know, can you give some some details about what you're seeing there? Yeah, I mean, look, first of all, it, the implementation is truly as simple as um, yours described it before, right? Um, once that uh, key sent and the property sort of approves the fact that Roomdex um, docks into the PMS, then it's up to the property to do some diligence in making sure that the room types are, um, you know, the rooms are correctly entered and that we, um, you know, enter the attributes that each room has and decide what should be the parameters as we've seen to make sure that the right rate um, or the right dynamic rate, so to speak, um, filters true. But for us, it was really a situation of, and everyone or most of you hopefully that are, um, are listening and watching to this, um, um, remember each hotel always had a front office or front desk upsell, um, um, you know, path or an SOP, and it was part of the uh, the process that when a customer arrives, we're obviously trying to upsell them into a better room. But as we know, depending on what the status of training of that specific colleague is that is in front of that customer, there are so many competing other priorities um, that happen at that moment, plus the quest to keep check-in as short as possible and take as much of the transactional component of checking away, it is burdensome to try to upsell a customer at the time of check-in. They probably come from a long flight. Maybe they have kids running around. So that's probably a bad moment to try to um, do a very important task within the business, uh, which is to maximize the revenue opportunity. So we felt that Roomdex is solving this in a way that we hadn't seen before. There have obviously been uh, predecessors that have done something similar, but we hadn't seen it done in a way that it was so well integrated that it literally takes any interference um, the day off or even prior to arrival out of the process. And the other thing that um, we have seen since we've implemented Roomdex is the big surprise on how big a driver early arrival and late departure is. And just to give you a few examples here, and that's obviously not the full sample size, but um, the three hotels that are live um, the longest, two of them in DC, one in Philadelphia, over the last 12 months, the total revenue generated 
um, was just over $62,000 incremental revenue generated at uh, just above a 5.1 something ROI. Some hotels higher, some hotels lower, and I, I can get into that in a little while. But generally speaking, um, money that we wouldn't have had if it weren't for room decks. But the interesting part is that 58% of that incremental revenue stems from early arrival and late departure. And that was a surprise for us because we did not, um, um, you know, align ourselves with room decks to pursue early arrival and late departure revenue. That was sort of a, a byproduct of it. The target for us initially was to go after room upsells. And depending on the type of hotel one has, right? Depending on how many room categories you have, do you have premium categories, do you have suites? And, and you know, the more different type of premium categories you have, obviously the greater your opportunity on the upsell part. And that's also what we see. The property with the highest um, early arrival late departure is not necessarily the property that also produces the largest um, um, room category upsell revenue. But the early arrival late departure revenue gave us pause and we started to investigate a little further. First, we felt like, well, we've always uh, taken the stand that within our lifestyle space, we don't want to punish the customer and you know, force them to be strictly within this you know, legacy 12, between 12 and three, right? Check out 12, arrival three. And we felt like if someone arrives earlier, then of course we wouldn't want to charge them if the room is ready. But what we um, realized also after talking to some of the customers that had purchased an early arrival or a late departure, the assurance it gives to the traveler to be actually able to do it and to have a room ready, you take a, um, a red-eye flight from the West and you arrive early on the East Coast and you have to prepare yourself to go for a meeting, a wedding, or whatever it is that you're planning for that day, to have assurance that that room's ready without having to purchase the entire prior night, that was the true revelation. And we felt that um, out of something that originally we felt a little guilty of doing, we actually feel confident now that we're doing the traveler a, um, a great service by offering that opportunity for them to purchase um, that specific early arrival. And then the late departure, we think there is a lot of in the moment type decision. You wake up in the morning and then you get the, you know, sort of the email that you want to do it, you don't want to do it. Um, you have a late flight, you want to stay in the room. So um, we've been focusing on that and it's worked very well. You know, the recovery of the pandemic, obviously um, the last 12 months, not the entire last 12 months has been uh, the way it's been since March of 2022. I guess that applies for, for many markets and, and, and many hotels, um, but we are certainly, um, seeing a increased and accelerated incremental revenue production through room decks, and we are continuously reevaluating what these early arrival late departure parameters should be, as well as you know what room categories can we um, create in addition to create opportunity um, for the traveler to you know buy up. That, that, that's awesome. That, that that's a great story and. Uh... Uh, and, and we are, you know, at Roomdex, uh, we are seeing a lot of that across um, a lot of hotel companies who are always surprised by the fact that these um, early arrivals and late departures are selling so well and account for a huge amount of revenue. I think it goes to show that that people will pay for things that they actually have value in, that, that, that they, they appreciate and they value. Um, it's uh, it's it's obviously it's evidence in the numbers that, that we see there. Um, it's about the end of the time that we have uh, allotted for this. So I, I want to wrap up. I just want to give, um, first of all, I just want to thank the three of you for attending today, especially Marco. Thank you for your insights. That's, um, that's I, Hopefully that's an inspiration to other hoteliers who may be watching right now. Uh, I, I want to give uh, Priya and Yas uh, just a, one last a final word on what they think the hoteliers takeaway should be from today. Uh, Priya, why don't you go ahead? Thanks, Paul. I, I think, uh, you know, as Marco mentioned, kind of building their tech stack and evolving it to meet their needs, knowing that there is availability and that, you know, there are vendors and, you know, we are partnering with them to make that available for our customers to kind of be a little bit more experimental, 
see what's out there, see what their roadblocks and challenges are, and see how they can over overcome that with technology. We all know that you know labor shortage is not going anywhere. And having that tech stack that aids you in performing better and enabling customer satisfaction is key. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Yas, final words? Yeah, I think I think I want to add to what uh, Priya said. Um, take advantage of the free trials that companies such as Roomnex offers, um, because you know the integration is simple, fast, and easy. And um, you know, if you try a free trial, you may get as surprised as Marco got with uh, early arrival late departures. There is this, there's just opportunities that you don't always know about. And yeah, if you want to move your hotel forward or you want to move your guest service forward. Try new things. They're controlled. They're free. So it's you know, my get my my suggestion to everybody would be buy a couple of more ornaments, try them out, and see that they'll be good for you. I agree. I agree. Well, look uh, again. Thanks everyone for attending. Just to let everyone who is on this webinar know that we will be um, producing a recording of this uh, webinar and sending you out a link to it. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please um, direct them to info at roomdex.io, um, and uh, we will answer any uh, lingering questions or any questions at all. And we encourage you all to call Priya and Yas and uh, and, and and see some demos of their product. Um, thanks, everybody. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. <clears throat>